anyways, uh, tonight's the last year of the knowledge, and we've had, I don't know, we had six or eight of them starting in January, and um, looking for some ideas for what people want to see or hear about next year uh, in the January to April time span, but we got lots of time. But anyways, I'm going to turn it over to Ray. He's our uh, Western Mass Section Manager, and um, the floor is yours, my friend. Okie dokie. I don't know. Should I, should I say that, um, again, I'm bringing up the rare. <laughs> the last one for the season for you guys. Uh, 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 well, I was hoping for more people, but yeah. Yeah. We'll see. It's all good. And, uh, you know, it's probably a subject, too, that, um, you know, a lot of people are probably familiar with. But for, there are those that, you know, really don't know exactly how much you actually get with a membership with uh, the ARRL. And there's quite a lot to it. And, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, especially in my role, I hear a lot of squawking and complaining. And, you know, and one of the things I always mention is that, you know, do they, do they know what exactly do they get? And they say, yeah, I get QST. Well, yeah, I mean, that is one of your benefits, definitely. Um, but there's a lot more to that. Um, you know, you've got uh, not only the magazine, but you've got um, other magazines as well. You've got On the Air magazine. Uh, this one here is relatively new. It's a, I think it's two years old now. And uh, this is one that's geared towards the newer ham. And uh, there's a lot of articles that actually points in that direction. Um, it's, it's really a, a nicely balanced magazine because they don't overload it with uh, a lot of um, advertising and they put in some good content to interest the newer hams or the younger hams. Uh, they also get the national contest journal. So people like, uh, you know, Larry, myself, uh, Jeff that do contesting, uh, sometimes we'll look at this magazine and get some information on, you know, winners of past contests and uh, other things going on in the contest world. And then there's also QEX for uh, those that are in there doing electrical and electronic experimentation and, um, and all that stuff. And um, the nice thing is, is that, uh, you know, when old, on the air came on yeah on the air came out they also made a change to the system so what it does is it gives that person the opportunity to um, select either the QST or the on the air man magazine as their main uh, mailing uh, magazine so um, the nice thing about it is, is that if you selected QST as your main mailing magazine, you actually got access to those other three magazines online free. So you, all you have to do is just log into the ARRL site and uh, just click on it and just pull up those magazines and uh, enjoy yourselves. So it's a nice feature. I mean, back in the day, I mean, those uh, other ones, I think they were what, 30 bucks a year for those magazines? So that was a, a nicely um, valued add um, piece to it. Yeah, of course, they, they made that available right after I bought a three-year subscription to NCJ. <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> it was impeccable timing, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it does happen. And of course, uh, a lot of the um, people also enjoy, or I, maybe I shouldn't say enjoy, um, Logbook of the World. Logbook of the World is the logging program, which does a lot of things. Not only does it take your logs for your contacts, but it also puts together the qualifications for your um, um, awards, like uh, Worked All States or DXCC. Um, you know, and there's a host of others in there that you can take advantage of. Um, yeah, in order to get the awards, you do have to pay some money, but, you know, there is some nice stuff, you know, a plaque or whatever, depending on the award that you can get with that. 
Um, yes. And before you even say it, Logbook of the World has had their problems. Um, and they're still in, encountering some problems. They had some downtime last week. They changed over another server. Now the uploads seem to be going a lot quicker, but they're still not out of the woods. And I'll explain more of that, about that and some other things uh, down the road a little bit. But uh, Logbook of the World, I use it. I know a lot of other people use it. Uh, people participating in volunteers on the air this year, that's their um, you know, tabulation uh, platform that they're using to calculate all the points that you gather over, over the year. And you don't have to do anything with it. It's all up in the system. Um, LOTW has a groups.io reflector um, that if you do have any technical issues, you could go there, ask the question. And um, there's uh, Bob Nauman, the director of operations down there, W5OV. Um, him or somebody else will be there. And they'll try to troubleshoot the problem, get you all fixed up and uh, working properly as you should. So there's good support back there too. It's just a matter of, you know, sending them an email through the groups or going to, um, you know, give them a direct phone call. They'd be glad to help you with this. The only thing that uh, I will ask is, especially whereas I highlighted the fact that they have had some problems, is patience. And again, I'll highlight that um, down the road in a little bit. Um, one of the big things is advocacy. When uh, the ARRL started up and all of a sudden they started realizing that politics was starting to play a game with uh, frequencies and all that, especially during the war when uh, the Navy took over the airwaves and they did not feel like giving it back. So they started doing some lobbying and all that. And finally, the Navy just uh, relinquished it. And in, I think it was 1934, they brought up the Telecommunications Act, which now the airwaves and the spectrum is all under control now so that it's not so much a free for all as it used to be. And to this day, it's still happening. You know, do we win every battle? No. Unfortunately not. Uh, for those that were following the, um, I don't know the um, uh, docket number, but the uh, recent uh, HOA issue that we brought to the uh, House and Senate, that didn't go over so well. Uh, we are currently working on getting a, a new wording out and some areas are actually looking at tackling this on a statewide level. Uh, we've got some advocates out in Arizona that's uh, fighting for us and some others um, in Washington that are fighting for us to try to get that HOA issue under control. Um, anybody that's following HOAs, they know it's a horror show out there as far as that. I mean, you blow your nose the wrong way out in the driveway, you can get fined for it, which I think is totally ridiculous. But anyways, the... Um, they are working on a lot of things. Now, one of the things that we also push through the system is um, expanding our uh, the bandwidth for uh, technicians, giving them more privileges on HF to entice them to uh, utilize uh, and get on the air more. Um, believe it or not, that's been sitting in, in uh, the FCC office for uh, a few years now, at least. I, I think it's more like five. Uh, the FCC has not been uh, moving along as quickly as we'd like it. And again, we've got some congressmen that are uh, trying to get some push to get some of these issues resolved, like the um, expanded bandwidth. There's also another one that um, looking to do uh, the three kilohertz bandwidth for uh, emergency communications in digital modes, it's like uh, Pactor 4. Um, they're looking to get that pushed through. There's, there's a few of them out there in Washington that are just kind of sitting there gathering some dust, waiting for something to happen. And needless to say, we're happening, but we're still working on it. Um, you guys got a radio, you guys uh, doing the thing, got an antenna up there, it's not working the way it should. And you've checked around with some people and it's, it's not, you're not getting the answer or the results that you're looking for. The league actually has tech information services. So there's a group of guys in there that basically sit there in the lab 
and they're doing all kinds of poking and prodding and testing and getting uh, electrocution shocks or whatever they're doing back there. But they also take phone calls from people like you who have technical issues, uh, maybe something about your radio or you know a certain way that you should uh, set up your antenna, um, you know anything like that. You could call them up and they'll help you through uh, some of these issues. Now, they're not going to repair the radios for you, so don't take your, uh, your old um, Tentec and uh, ship it down to them. They won't do that. But if you have a technical issue that they can help you, uh, by all means, they will uh, certainly assist you with that. Um, you know, definitely you want to consult your club first. Um, you know, there's always some great uh, technical expertise within your club. There's uh, also the tech specialists. Now, in my section and all sections for that matter, they have uh, tech specialists. And myself, I have a technical coordinator. His name is Greg, W-A-1-J-X-R. And you also have a local guy in uh, your neck of the woods and that's Bob, K-1-Y-O. He's also one of my technical specialists. And I believe uh, Nijem uh, took over for the club tech specialist. So definitely you wanna to go to those guys first. And if they can't help, then definitely sure, get a hold of the headquarters and um, see what they could do. You know, it may be a case where, yeah, they're gonna determine that you may need to take that radio to, um, you know, factory service, but at least they can point you in that right direction without you going around in circles. Product reviews. That's one of the things, you know, you open up your QST and, you know, what's the first thing you uh, probably see? Uh, what radios, what uh, tuners, what uh, uh, pieces of equipment uh, are getting reviewed? Um, I don't know how many, I know Larry's been in there a bunch of times and, and some others, but you go in there and there is actually a little test lab and you go inside there and you, you literally think that you're going into this oven, getting ready to get baked. Um, the thing is completely immersed in metal and it, it's basically a Faraday cage. It's meant to keep RF out and uh, keep RF in. And that is where they test their equipment. So if you get that, that uh, new dual bander and what they do is they'll beat the heck out of it and they will make the testing, make their standards, get the results. If they find anything a little funky, you know, maybe if uh, a knob that could be uh, improved upon or, you know, the antenna is not working well or, um, you know, or like in the case of the ball fangs, the harmonics are just so bad. The um, number one, they will contact the manufacturer in hopes that they can make those corrections. If that doesn't happen, then the, the natural course is they will refuse to print any type of um, uh, review on that product if it's that bad. That's why for a bunch of years, you weren't seeing Woshungs and Baofangs on the product reviews because they were so bad. And it took Baofang a long time, but now they finally cleaned up their act and I believe a year or so ago, you finally saw that review on QST because it met their standards. So when they do a review, they're pretty thorough about these things and they do a nice job in there. And of course, any of the equipment that they get in for review over the course of the year, all that stuff there does go to the auction that they hold in October and the uh, auction, the money that they raise from that goes to the various league programs, whether it's the education fund or um, some of the other ones that they have there. So they uh, actually turn it around and put it to some good use after the fact. And of course, what's the other benefit that they have? Well, lately it's been money. Um, in the past, the league has really not done a whole lot as far as money outside of the normal uh, scholarships. And they still do the scholarships. And actually they've expanded on those scholarships and they're providing a lot more of those to a lot of uh, worthy amateur college goers. So that's a good thing. Uh, and of course, everybody knows in 2022, 
the league has uh, received a half a million dollars from the ARDC and they provided uh, grants to clubs who to, to finance projects and programs. Um, so case in point in our section, uh, the Quaybaugh Club in West Brookfield, they, um, they actually reformed themselves and drew themselves out of the ashes. And some of that is due to the fact that they did get one of those grants. They put the money to some very good use in license classes by footing the bill for the entire thing. So the students didn't have to pay a thing. They got their books for free. They got their license tests for free. They got the $35 uh, free. And those that did pass the exam actually got a dual band HD to start off with. So that injected a lot of uh, new membership into that club. So the ARDC did a good thing. Um, we broke it up into two uh, sessions. The first session, um, we gave out about eh, just over a quarter of a million dollars. And the amount of grant applications, I think came in at $1.7 million. So a lot of people were looking for that money. Second time around, um, you know, it was a little less than a half a mil, but still it generated $1.2 million in grant applications. So they're taking the information for this first year, they're gonna forward it to the ARDC and they are hoping that the ARDC takes, uh, takes a note of that, see how we did the program, and uh, hopefully they'll give us another grant this year to do the same thing. Uh, obviously, the, the, the applications show that there's a great need for uh, money to get infused into these uh, clubs. Oh, plus, you can, you can also apply directly to the ARDC, yep. which, is, which is what we did with the Big E. And we, we got a uh, $10,000 grant from them last year. We applied right. this year. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, the ARDC, I mean, uh, I don't know how deep their pockets is, but I think they're uh, competing with Exxon as to how deep it is. Um, yeah, a lot of deep pockets and um, a lot of good programs are coming out of the ARDC. I think uh, Massachusetts um, or the New England division, there's a group out there that does um, RFI and spread spectrum. They wound up with like a $23,000 grant. You know and how, you know how they made their money, Ray. Right? They sold off a whole pile of IP addresses. Yep, off the forty-four block. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting. Go on. That's all right. I, I can't see anybody raising hands or anything. So yeah, just chime up. But uh, yeah, they sold a whole pile of IP addresses, and uh, it went for some huge money. Huge money. Um. So yeah, students, oh, yeah. students are getting ARDC scholarships as well. So um, excellent thing going on. And of course, you guys know this already, the QSL service. Um, just a little history. I, I've been going through a lot of the older uh, QST magazines going back to about the 50s. And I'll tell you, back then, you guys were the main QSL service for, this, for the area. And you've been doing that for a whole bunch of years. So um, I know one guy out there grabs a whole bunch of cards and brings them down to Newington, which is great. But uh, yeah, you guys were the forefront in Massachusetts as far as uh, the QSL cards for Mass. So um, you guys know all about that. And it's still going on. They don't get as many as they used to. Um, hopefully that's going to turn around because now COVID is uh, lifting their restrictions. But uh, it's still kind of uncertain as to what uh, the future is going to hold for Q, uh, QSL cards. I mean, I like to see them. I see some uh, good pictures. Uh, I've done some sorts, and I've even saw some quite unusual ones um, and some actually some old ones. I did one a few years ago that I saw QSL cards going back to 1977. It's like, well, I guess they were on top of the ball. But... Um, but yeah, QSL cards, they're, they're fun. A lot of people enjoy those. I like to keep that tradition going. But again, you know, with LOTW and all the other logging programs, you know, they may be putting nails into the coffin for that program. 
One of the newer uh, aspects in the, um, within the league is the learning center. Believe it or not, it's been out there for quite a while now, but there's a renewed um, interest in getting this thing fired up again. And they are doing a few things that's uh, gonna help uh, the clubs and also to the individual. The only downside to this is that, yeah, you do have to be an ARRL member and you do need to log in to access this. But um, they're putting out uh, programs. They've got uh, um, Dave Kassler's uh, videos uh, and he, he makes a pile of them. So he's got Dave Kassler's videos on various subjects, including the licensed classes. And Mike Walters, uh, our field uh, services manager, has been working on getting um, various uh, people who hold club positions or had club positions to do like a 15, 20 minute talk on the learning center about various functions and how to uh, effectively do it on the club. So for instance, uh, the treasurer, I think the one we've got one coming up uh, April 25th um, for the club treasurer. And I think they just had one in March for the club secretary. So they're going to go through all those various uh, club positions and kind of teach uh, those individuals on how to be, you know, an effective um, officer for the club. Hopefully that'll help uh, boost up your club, strengthen it some more, and um, maybe come up with some great ideas on uh, some uh, other uh, projects and idea, uh, uh, projects and activities. That's what I was looking for. Um, so yeah, so we got that coming up. There is one coming up about, you know, uh, applying for a 501c3, some fundraisings, uh, how to do good meetings. I mean, not like you guys need any of that. You guys have great meetings. Um, so that's out there. Then we've got other goodies. Um, you got the ARRL.net uh, email forwarding service. So that's out there. Uh, E-newsletters. If you go into my profile, which I'm sure a lot of you know where it is, uh, there's a big list out there and you could pick and choose what uh, email newsletters that you get. So for instance, the newest one that got uh, rejuvenated was the uh, club newsletter, which is uh, pretty good. And they're also looking for clubs to contribute to that uh, club newsletter if you got anything going on. Maybe you had a big fox hunt or, uh, you know, uh, uh, an unusual field day, anything like that, uh, you know, submit it and uh, they can put it, they can certainly put it in the club uh, news and Mike would love you for it. Um, you get the listings for the clubs. Uh, you can access uh, licensed classes that are coming up that people can test coming up. The uh, field day is coming up. So there's a field day locator in there. So that's uh, another good, uh, that's a, actually a popular one. Um, affiliated clubs like yourself and ours, uh, you get their own call sign. And I'm sure, and Larry, you, you, you've got, you're all set on the club commissions. You got that in your newsletters, right? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. So yeah, definitely take advantage. What a lot of clubs have been doing with those is that they've been uh, uh, doing like a once a year membership drive. So they could uh, get it all done in one shot and uh, be done with that. Another club was actually quite innovative. So if you got an individual that renews their uh, membership through there, well, basically what they're doing is that the next time they go around to renew, the $5 that they uh, get for the commission, they roll it into their uh, next year's um, dues. So instead of whatever it is per year, they knock $5 off. They save some money. So I think that's a neat little idea. Um, Hemp fest assistance. Um, as, you, as you know, with the Mount Tom and stuff, what they do is they apply to the league um, to be a um, affiliated to Hemp fest. And what the league does is they actually give out um, gift certificates. And um, I won a $50 one at Mount Tom's. That was uh, pretty neat. Um, but uh, yeah, you get, uh, get, they give out gift certificates, they publicize it and, um, and all that. Now, 
Another thing that they're also doing too is that with the new budget that came in, they also are looking to pump in um, throughout different uh, ham fests about $150,000. So if you got a ham fest that's struggling a little bit, they could use about you know ten or fifteen thousand dollars to help with publicizing it, um, you know, or, or whatever they need to uh, for that for that to be more successful, they're actually providing them with some funding for it. So that's a new one that the club is uh, doing. Um, special services clubs, um, Larry's well aware of that. You guys are part of that elite group. And I certainly hope uh, that continues. I, I, was I was surprised at how few special service clubs there are throughout New England. There's only, yeah. there's less than 20 out of the I don't know, 150 clubs in, the, in New England. Yeah, and I believe that in Western Mass, you're the only one. Uh, Love to see some more, but obviously, you know what, uh, you know, Larry, um, <laughs> do, you, do you know what it takes to um, be in a special service club? You have to, let's see if I remember, you have to, um, you have to hold classes, uh that was the big one is you have to hold classes and and i there's three or four other requirements that i can't think of off the top of my head but um um i don't remember sorry okay no worries but uh, yeah and, and and here's another one too um i took advantage of this and uh i i but encouraging other clubs to do the same if they need to. There's a spot in the website that if you go to uh, about once a year, you could actually send in some uh, forms. And what they will actually do is that they will create a, uh, a set of mailing labels, self-addressed uh, self um, adhesive labels. So if you want to send out a mailing to, uh, you know, hams in the area that are not part of your club or anything like that, what they can do is um, get a, get a um, you know, whether you do postcards or letters, but there's the mailing addresses right there, all done up for you. All you do is you submit the information, what you're using it for, and the zip codes that you want the listings from. So I wound up with like 350 uh, mailing labels we print, uh, printed up a, a letter and sent them out to everybody. Got a little bit of interest, but uh, unfortunately for our club, it didn't work out as good. But that doesn't mean that other clubs could benefit uh, much better than uh, our um, results. So, you know, I'm sure I've missed a few. There are a bunch of stuff out there and things are constantly changing up there. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, LOTW is um, definitely one that, uh, you know, sticks out in a lot of people's minds. And the club, the, the league does have problems. There's no, there's, no, there's no doubt about it. And this year with the budget, they are looking to lose about a million and a half dollars. So they've been running in the red for the last couple of years. Don't quote me on it. Don't guarantee me, but there's been some rumblings going on. They might be looking at a um, membership increase. I'm hoping that they don't, but it may be necessary down the road. Um, during COVID, it was an immense struggle for them to print out the QSTs because paper was in shorthand. Um, printing was in short supply due to help and it was a nightmare for them to try to keep that thing going and that's why you saw some interruptions over the last couple of years because of that and needless to say the cost for that stuff has just riven, risen astronomically not to mention some of the other operating uh, costs for doing other things uh, the league has also invested a lot of money in hiring key people that uh, from the past three chief executives have uh, either let go by the wayside or basically just eliminated that position. Mike Walters, the field services manager. We've got Josh Johnston now. He's uh, the uh, emergency communications manager. We've got Steve Goodgame, who's in charge of education. 
And we've got Bob Nauman, who's the um, operations manager, mostly in charge with LOTW and IT. And just recently, they also hired a IT manager. And obviously, you know, these people got to get paid and uh, that's going to cost them a nice piece of change, not to mention the money they have to put in to try to repair or restore some of the things that have been long since uh, neglected. So that's why I, I kind of mentioned that because I do ask that, uh, you know, even though you might be, you know, fuming about the league, about not doing this and not doing that and not being quick enough, they are working on it. Um, these guys out there from the chief executive on down, they're putting in 10 hour days. And one of the things that they have to deal with is the membership at large, just constantly getting riddled about all these problems and they're shouldering them the blame. And I don't think it's fair. They're doing what they can to get it fixed. Um, and I'm not making excuses. I'm just seeing what uh, I see. Have I gotten upset with the league? Yeah, I have. Um, is it perfect? Nope. But we are working on it. Uh, your input, your patience, and also, um, you know, working towards getting more members, working, uh, getting more members into the, uh, into the league, that's going to help because they're making money. And a lot of the people that they've lost is because they were frustrated and we need to turn that corner. And Ray, maybe, Ray is, is there any idea how many of the members are life members? I don't have those numbers offhand. Uh, I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, it's, uh, I, was, I was asked by the Voda group um, what the expiration dates were for the members, uh, for the team of for the Voda, which starts at eight o'clock tonight for Western Mass, or for Massachusetts, excuse me. And I was surprised to see that three quarters of my 17 ops are, are life members. But uh, it makes you wonder, uh, I mean, I, when it went from 39 to 49 a year, I joined as a life member because I didn't want to pay that extra $10 a year for the rest of my life. Yeah. But uh, it, it, it makes you wonder, you know, about that money that's not coming in that's already come in or people that have joined, you know, when it was $125 um, versus, you know, it's what, 14 or $1,500 now to join as a life member. But it's uh, it's money that's not coming in every year of the 160,000 members they have. Yeah, and and they look at the, the life members and that is uh, one component of the league that they have to manage very carefully. So that's why you see a lot in, you know, with the ARRL Foundation is, you know, part of that money is the life members because they have to manage it in such a way where it does draw um, some dividends so that it sustains the um, that over a much longer lifespan than what the life members have actually paid. So yeah, it's it's a, it's a delicate balance for that particular um, group of people. Hmm. Do you predict that at some point all the um, magazines will go electronic only? There's going to be a lot of uh, debate on that. Um, obviously, there's a lot of people like myself that do enjoy getting that uh, magazine every month. You know, they could stuff it in a bag, they could take it wherever they want. You know, if you try to get it online, you got to hope that wherever you're trying to get it, you have service. Nowadays, it's not so bad, but there are spots out there that uh, you just don't have that Wi Fi and you just can't access it unless you directly download it and load up your hard drive with it. Um, down the road, I mean, I think they're going to have to really look at their printing costs and uh, what it's been uh, uh, doing to us. If it becomes such a financial burden, they may actually go total electronic. I can't, I can't predict that uh, down the road, but there's been talk about it. Hmm. I wish there was a membership option where there wasn't an option for the magazine. It would be a cheaper membership option. I've, su I've suggested that to um, the New England director, well, the previous, uh, previous, previous New England director. And well, you might as well have been talking to the wall with, with that. Yeah, you might, yeah. you <laughs> might want to suggest it to the current New England director. Yeah, but um, 
if they had a non QST subscription tier, I would have definitely been more interested in that, especially on a life uh, membership version of that. If they had that, I would definitely take it. But um, for me, QST is, is, is not for me, but I know it's for others, but I wish they had other options than, you know, just electronic or not. And you still have to pay the same price, but that's just, that's just my personal opinion. It's not a. Yeah. 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 And, and, and what's to say that that hasn't been kicked around a little bit, but I'm sure if somebody said something, you probably got about three quarters of the room turning around saying, no, not that. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't, I can't uh, predict that uh, future. Oh, uh, one thing I uh, forgot to mention too, uh, they actually made a little um, uh, enhancement to the club commission program. I believe, I don't, I don't know the exact number, but if you take and you turn in X amount of commissions to the league that uh, your club took in, uh, I think after so many of them, they actually ship you the uh, um not the full ARRL manual, but the one that they broke up into little books. I think you have to, if you submit five at a time. I, yeah, um, something like that. They'll, they'll ship you a, um, a 100th anniversary, um, um, not the yearbook, the, uh, the... The manual. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, that's out there now. So, and um, yeah, who knows what else is going on out there. So, um, you know, that, that pretty much does it. Uh, you know, I hope that uh, I gave you guys uh, a little more information as far as what the, uh, the league is doing, what your contributions to the league uh, can do for them. Volunteering is one thing. Financial is another. Uh, being a valuable member uh, means an awful lot to them as well. And they put an awful lot of uh, resources at your fingertips uh, to enjoy the benefits of being a, an NARRL member. And, um, you know, and, and if you get some time, I encourage you to take a ride out to Newington and do the tour. It's a, it's a lot of fun, especially if you like, you know, old stuff and history and stuff like that. There's a lot of they're, history. They're not there. doing tours yet. They're still I was, not? No, I was down there last Thursday. They're still not doing tours. Interesting. You can operate W1AW, you can walk around the front office, but they're not doing tours at the back. Huh. I thought they would have lifted that by now. Unless they don't have the people to do it. I, I don't know. I've been threatening them to go down there for a visit anyway. <laughs> I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta raise some hackles. Hmm. All right. Um, any other questions out there? Any comments? No comments from anybody. Wicked. I guess I, I guess I done good. Yeah, you did good, Ray. Thank you very much. And uh, I wish our crowd was a little bigger, but uh, we got we we got more than just you and I out here, so that's that's a good start. Yeah. But uh, good presentation, and um, you know, appreciate you taking the time to join us tonight. And it'll go up on. Um, on the HRA um, uh, HRA website and the HRA club page too, and if you want, I'll send you a link. Also, you can download it from my uh, my Dropbox. I'll share it with you so you can have a copy of it. And okay. um, can you send us send me a copy of the uh, PowerPoint, please? Sure. Well, sounds like a plan. Uh, anybody else have any other questions or comments or anything? Oh. I think that's but I I did notice the same thing, Larry. You were saying about the life members and the photo ops. Yeah, there, I noticed that too. I, I was I was shocked majority. at how many how many yeah. life members um, yep. are of the seventeen are uh, yeah for our photo ops. So if you want to work uh, volunteers on the air and you want to work Massachusetts, I got a team of seventeen ops that um, starting at uh, zero 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 Zulu at the uh, in what is it 13 minutes um somebody will be on the air and we'll be on the air for the next seven days um what else is going on with the club uh not much what's the uh, um what's the popular uh, mode and band that uh, they're doing 
It's we're uh, anywhere from 160 all the way down to uh, two meters. Um, CW sideband and FT8. There's a little bit of satellite stuff that might happen. Um, I've even got an op that's in Mississippi or Missouri. I think it's Mississippi, who's running remotely through K1 Triple T. Uh, so the transmitter's in Massachusetts and um, and operating. Um, cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's that's going to be kind of interesting. And and everybody else is spread throughout all of Massachusetts, and we're hoping to make some contacts. We I I don't know what. Um, Joe wasn't sure when I was down there last Thursday, he couldn't tell me what other states are making numbers wise. Uh, he didn't have that information, but I don't know whether we're going to work, you know, a thousand people or we're, we're going to do like what we did with, uh, uh, I can't imagine it's going to be like rabid, like 13 colonies last year. We worked over 21,000 people in seven days, but if we can work a couple thousand people with everybody, that, that'd be nice. Um, I think this first yeah. go round, um, I'm wondering if it's going to be a little light in the loafers. Um, surprisingly, I'm still hearing from people they don't know about Voda. Wow. Uh, which it's 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 surprising. So my thinking is is that this one here may not be so bad so much, but maybe the second round mm. might have a lot more activity because now people are more, uh, know about it more. More and more people hear about it, and then yeah. and really go hunting for everything towards the end yeah. of the year. Well, well, that's the a, ones that's a possibility. Yeah, yeah, the ones I've heard so far, a uh, few that I've gotten, there's been some pretty good pileups going with them. Yeah, yeah. You know? I actually go out there, and I think I swear that there's people out there that you know have the, have a list with them, because I actually made a contact, um, a DX contact, and then all of a sudden I had you know a pile of them coming up from uh, America. One of them actually texted me through. Uh, um, FT8, and they said, thanks for the 175 points. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> right out of the blue, you know? It's like, yep. okay, so they're looking. They're out there looking. Good. Now, I, I was talking to Joe, and he said, if I wanted to run um, two separate logs, one for Voda and one my own personal, I can make the, I can do the W1AW slash one for the five points and do the W1AST and do the giveaway the 30 points. And uh, I don't know how crazy that's going to make me. <laughs> <laughs> with dual keyboards and, and stuff yeah. on the desktop. You could practice uh, on SO2R, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that could get confusing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that's what uh, that's what I expect. It might get a little confusing, but it'll also be fun. So uh, we'll see. Hopefully we'll work some of you guys too. It's, it's going to be interesting <laughs> to say the least. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be definitely out there. And, um, and of course, uh, I got my little uh, thing coming up in a couple of weeks. Yep. And yep. my plan is, is that uh, if, if I'm well enough, I'm going to take and, um, you know, sit in the computer and my radio and I'm going to self spot myself on a band on FT8 and see how it happens. I've heard some of them get uh, nasty pileups uh, going. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Anyways, thanks again, Ray. And thanks everybody else for, uh, for joining us tonight and um uh, oh yeah ann and uh, keith say thanks uh, ray nice presentation oh, and this is our last uh, share the knowledge for the uh for this or at least plan share the knowledge for the season as it gets warmer and uh less people come out but um, um it's uh, it's a good way to end it and a uh, great presentation ray thank you very much yep. you're very welcome yep. glad to yep right. thank you ray all right and you guys take care right. and uh, hopefully i'll get out your way soon Sounds yes. good. Sounds good. We'll take, take you up care. on that. Everybody have a good evening and enjoy the uh, the sunshine the rest of the week. It's going to be gorgeous. Be in shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Seven three. Seven three.